This photo reminds me of a landscaper I had who would cut my grass and had no fear of cutting around beehives. After a few months, I came home to him waiting outside one day with his eye, lip, cheek, and arm completely swollen. He had said, this is going to be the last time I cut your grass. I'm not cutting around them bees no more. You got them Wu-Tang killer bees. This is when I learned about the natural occurrence of dearth, which I'll explain later in this video. Let's get into it. When a honeybee stings, they release pheromones that stir up nearby bees. Often, those other bees join the attack. One stinging bee can turn into hundreds or even thousands of stinging bees in just a short time. When a honeybee stings you, its sharp barbed stinger pierces the skin. This stinger injects a venom called apotoxin. In most cases, the stinger gets stuck in the victim's skin and tears loose from the bee. In most cases, this is a massive injury to the honeybee. Other parts of his body rip off with the stinger, killing the bee. The stinger then continues to pump venom into the victim for up to 10 minutes or until it's removed. Honeybees are the only bee species that die after stinging. However, honeybees sometimes survive after stinging if the victim's skin is thin and doesn't hold the barbed end of the stinger. This doesn't happen often, though, because honeybee stingers are designed to stick into the skin of the victim to release as much venom as possible. A wasp stinger is not like a bee stinger. It is designed to be used again and again, striking the possible threat multiple times and stabbing the intended prey or potential threat like a small needle. A bee stinger is barbed at the end, which is why a bee will sting and then die. When the bee takes off, the stinger stays in the flesh of the prey and disembowels the bee. A wasp stinger is smooth and does not stick in a person's flesh. It retracts into the body, able to extend over and over again. Wasps will attack in large numbers. When a threat is detected, wasps release a pheromone that summons the rest of the soldier wasps. They will pursue a potential threat over long distances and swarm the threat, their entire time stinging repeatedly. There are thousands of different types of bees and wasps, but only certain ones can sting. Another one is the bumblebee. Bumblebees have smooth stingers that are easy to remove, so these bees can sting more than once too, but bumblebees are generally less aggressive than honeybees and less likely to sting. Despite their painful stings, bees are an important part of the world. Without them, we wouldn't have all the beautiful flowers that bloom during the spring and summer. Avoiding bees when you see them will protect the bees as well as yourself. A bee stinger is a modified version of an oviposter, or an egg depositor. The stinger itself consists of three main components, one stylet and two lancets. Each of these components is hollow. They connect to another hollow chamber called a bulb at the top of the stinger. The bee's venom is stored in a venom sac above the bulb. The venom sac deposits venom into the bulb via two valves. Bee venom is called apotoxin. Apotoxin is a complex mixture of protein substances that affect cellular function. These peptides and enzymes break apart fat layers and cells and destroy skin mast cells. When skin mast cells die, they release histamine, which dilutes the blood vessels. People who are allergic to bee stings release too much histamine when their mast cells die. Their blood vessels dilate too significantly, triggering potentially deadly anaphylactic shock. If you have the misfortune of being stung by a bee, it is important to remove the stinger as soon as possible to prevent venom in the stinger from continuing to enter your body. You can use tweezers or a credit card to pull or scrape the stinger away, or even use your fingers if nothing else is available. Once the stinger is out, wash the area with soap and water and then apply an ice pack or cold press. Most of the time, bee sting symptoms are minor and include a sharp burning pain, a red welt, or a slight swelling around the stung area, and most people's swelling and pain go away within a few hours. Some people who get stung by a bee have a bit stronger reaction with signs and symptoms such as extreme redness, swelling at the side of the sting that gradually enlarges over the next day or two. Moderate reactions tend to resolve over five to 10 days. Having a moderate reaction doesn't mean you'll have a severe allergic reaction the next time you're stung, but some people develop similar moderate reactions each time they're stung. If this happens to you, talk to your doctor about treatment and prevention, especially if the reaction becomes much more severe each time. A severe allergic reaction to bee stings is potentially life-threatening and requires emergency treatment. A small percentage of people who are stung by a bee quickly develop anaphylaxis. Signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis include skin reactions including hives and itching and red flushed or pale skin, difficulty breathing, swelling of the throat and tongue, a weak rapid pulse, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, dizziness or fainting, and loss of consciousness. People who have a severe allergic reaction to a bee sting have a 25 to 65% chance of anaphylaxis the next time they're stung. 
If you liked this video and would like to see a whole lot more videos related to farming and gardening, please hit the subscribe button right now. Hit it like right now. I'll wait. Thanks. Lastly, bees can get more aggressive during a dearth. A dearth is a shortage of nectar producing flowers. The bees can't find nectar, so they often try to steal it from other hives. This begins an aggressive behavior known as robbing. Not only are robbing honeybees aggressive, but the bees being robbed become aggressive defenders of their stores. This often results in a cloud of bees around a hive, especially in the fall. Look carefully. If robbing is going on, you will see bees fighting with each other at the hive entrance. The ground in front of the hive may be littered with dead honeybees. The fighting bees release an alarm pheromone, an odor that warns other bees of danger. The alarm pheromone makes other honeybees aggressive, and more fighting means more pheromone is released, which means more bees join the fray. The situation can escalate quickly.